But she comes over and she's like, would you like to try our dessert? And my initial response is, uh, no, no, thank you. Because I'm, you know, I'm trying to get down to my fighting weight. I'm trying to, you know, knock off a few more pounds. And uh, what is your fighting weight? Well, I want. I, I, <laughs> exactly. That really bummed you out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I was 200 not that long ago, and I was really excited that by September 1st, my goal was to reach 195. And I got on the scale September 1st, and I was. Everybody listen to Derek Carter. Yeah. We all know he's the party starter. Uh, so if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to a pocket party. Uh, pocket party. They're wrong. Previously on the Pocket Party Podcast, Darren started a party in your ear holes. You guys yell something out. Here we go. I like my women like I like my... Cockroaches. I like my women like I like my what? Cockroaches. Uh, I like my women like I like my cockroaches. When I, when I turn the light on, they leave. back hope you guys are having a great day listening to this podcast hope you're doing what you like to do and uh, hopefully we'll keep you company in the next uh, hour or so hello hello is this the one and only comedian extraordinaire mike black yeah you've made a mistake I've, i'm retiring from comedy <laughs> yeah. no way why would you retire from comedy? What, what do you possibly what no what I, do you I uh, I made eight dollars this year as a comedian. So well, the good news is that the, it wasn't my choice. Comedy retired me. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy said you're done. Yeah, you. We didn't. I got some lovely parting gifts. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. Yeah, what was that thing? We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. You didn't quit comedy. Comedy quit you. Uh, you're about to. Get canceled. I'm just quoting <laughs> movies. <laughs> written, yeah, I know. Horrible, right? <laughs> horrible impression of Malcolm X. Oh damn! Uh, I was trying to do like the movie trailer. Oh. That was a real line. Oh gosh. Yeah, that was. You didn't know that was a real line. I don't know, man. I just I don't Malcolm watch. Malcolm X said, "It's not a movie. It's a historical fact." Anyway, um, yeah. we should probably move on. Yeah, exactly. Way far away from that topic. Yeah. Wow. We didn't quit comedy. Apparently, I'm not the only one who's retiring from comedy. I uh, know. Hey, wait a second. We're both retiring. This is wild. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So it is written, so it shall be done. The second this week of September. A, this isn't live, right? <laughs> no. No. Hey, the good news is, listen, this is the good news. I was just talking to Eric Griffin the other night. We did a show. Oh, the great Eric Griffin, yeah. Eric Griffin, and, you know, he's writing. From, uh, yeah. Workaholics. Workaholics and that comedy store documentary that I'm sure we were we were both not in. <laughs> I I like to think they're saving us for the sequel. <laughs> exactly. You, know. yeah, you can't they can't shoot their shot all in one boom, you know what I mean? They got Yeah, they 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 only had four three hour long episodes. Uh there just wasn't enough time. Yeah. <laughs> to put us in the- yeah, they're like you guys are gonna be the quiet, you know, quietly. Yeah. Yeah, for season two. The unsung heroes of, yeah. of season two. So he's right in there with like, uh, he's not exactly where he wants to be, but he's, you know, I was talking to him and he was telling me that, you know, he's like, man, if you could get like, I think he said 300,000 subscribers to your podcast, then you're set. So, okay, well, where are, we, where are we at right now? We are not even close, but... Well, just give me a number. Give me a- Let's just. What are we, what are we working? With? Okay, let's just say we're working with ten thousand. Are Are we working with ten thousand? I don't know because I haven't looked. <laughs> I haven't looked in a while because I don't want to. I don't want to. You know when you don't want to weigh yourself. That, and, yeah, you you like you, kinda, you really took this advice to heart and immediately yeah. got to work. Well, I used to look. Numbers. I know I used to look all the time, and then you'd be like, oh, you know, and, and there's this great song by Weezer called "Numbers." Numbers are out <laughs> to get you. Numbers. Ooh. 
I mean, it's a great song because it actually speaks to what's happening right now. Like when you're little, you're not tall enough to play, you know, you know, you're not, you're not, when you're little, you're not tall enough to be on the ride. When then, and then certain, you know, math scores, you get a D in the class and you're, and then now with subscribers and followers, you feel like you're, you don't have those numbers. So I always think about those numbers and it's like, uh, you know, when, 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 listen, there was an ad, there was a company. This sounds like it would be a great song for Sesame Street. <laughs> exactly. To discourage kids from learning math. Ever. Yeah, there was this company that um, they started following me on Twitter right before the pandemic. And uh, I don't even want to say the name of them because I don't want to plug them. But basically, they started following me. And I noticed that they, they sponsor a lot of podcasts. And... You know, I asked, I, I reached out to the guy, hey, thanks for following Pocket Party Podcast, blah, blah, blah. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, I like your comedy, da, da, da. And then I was like, hey, any chance you'd want to sponsor the podcast? And he's like, oh, nope. He's like, no problem. Here's what our rates are. And, they, and he was describing, you know, what he pays typically like to Ari Shafir and Tom Segura, Bart Kreischer. And right. it all started where I, I had to have 50,000 downloads. And I was like, and I looked at my downloads and I'm like, Damn, I'm not even. I don't even have thirty thousand yet. How am I going to get to forty and then fifty before? And that's when I realized, like, okay, let's let's try something else. <laughs> you know, let's let's not focus so, on. Yeah, this. Inc- not. I'm not going to say an impossible number, but just a number that's like, you know. So you're saying that uh, you want me to be topless anytime we do a video podcast? <laughs> exactly. It's like asking, like, do what I can to goose the numbers. <laughs> yeah. hey, how do I get a million dollars? Well, first you get your first million, and then you can get the <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the the advice uh, the dice would give <laughs> if you like a girl. It's easy, just sell out Madison Square Garden and then ask her out. <laughs> That's funny. But that's true. That's why I was like, but I, it was interesting talking to, to Eric about that. And he's, you know, cause he, he's doing pretty well. He's, I would say he's doing very well, but in his eyes, he's like, I want to be, you know, you know, like Tom, like he was, he kept mentioning like Tom Segura, but like those guys are, cause I guess they all have like those big numbers and then they're just, they can tour when they want, when they don't want, where they want, they can choose not to tour and just do the podcast, like that kind of thing. In other words, yeah. there's always those, a chance. Those guys yeah. do a lot of like side stuff to get fans, like underground cage fighting. And so, are you ready to do that? I don't know if I'm ready. I don't even know if I want to do the Twitch thing because Eric was saying he was like, you know, when someone's just giving you facts, but then it kind of makes you slightly depressed. He's like, because somebody said something, and he was like, oh yeah, I learned to monetize my personality. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like. And then they go, what do you mean? And he said, you know, like during the during you know COVID, he's like, I, I went on Twitch, started playing video games, started getting paid, and I'm like, wow, I don't even really play video games. Like, I don't know, you know. But hey, maybe that's something you could do, Mike. Have you ever played video games for money on Twitch? Uh, not for money. No. I've, and I don't have a setup right now. To do yeah. Twitch, I like how it got super serious right now because because I have a feeling you've thought about this before. You're like, you know what? I'm, I'm, yeah, I've, I yeah. mean, like I I've played video games, but I've done it where I'm just talking through the video game, and yeah. when it's just you by yourself, to me that's very difficult. I need to bounce off of somebody else, uh, but they like. I I tried it once at the store and I tried it once by myself where I was playing like Red Dead Redemption and I yeah. played uh, what's the other one Call of Duty and I get I'm just too into the game to really worry about like being funny and I've noticed that most of the people that do it they're funny on occasion yeah but like the ones that you see that really take off or they played for three hours and whittled it down to like five good minutes of like the best of sort of. It stuff. might even be faked a little bit, huh? Don't you think? I mean, cause somebody told me I about this. I think a lot of it yeah. is, is that, or like they, they at least wrote a few lines ahead of time. And a lot of it is just, you'll see a lot of Twitch streams that are just very, very either they're, Olympic level video game player people mm. or ex- 
extraordinarily attractive people. <laughs> oh, I see. Just yeah. like pretty much any other type of entertainment, it's it's amazing how successful the attractive are at uh, at just about anything, you know. But um, funny, I find is is lacking. But that's just me. I haven't watched a whole lot of it, you know. I've most of it that I've watched, though. I was like, it, I. I I really don't find it all that. Yeah, funny. like like this. <laughs> you know? I remember there was this Thai restaurant I used to go to, and uh, they used to sponsor the pocket pocket party podcast. They were called the Thai Room, and they're no longer around. <laughs> but anyways, they uh, they uh, the the kid that worked there was like, "Oh, Darren, you're so funny!" And I showed him some clips, and he's like, "You know what you should do?" And then that's when he told me he's like, "These video games, and you can make money." And da 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 da. And I was like, "What do you mean?" And he showed me a sample, and it was literally these guys playing video games. And as they were talking, they were like, hey, Mike, doo, 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 doo. I'll just make the video game noise. I don't even know what the noise is. Doo, doo, doo. How many names can you think of uh, for the word fart? And then the other guy, and that's when I was like, oh, this is all pre-scripted where the guy was like, right now I pulled it up on the internet. They could be like an air yeah. bagel, airbrush your boxers, anal salute, anal volcano. Oh, yeah, it's a blast off, a blast, you know, all this gross stuff. And I was like, I just... Barking spiders, crack one, I, and and I was like, oh, they probably have like some list that they're reading, and it, the one guy would say it, the other would, they, they would giggle, and it's just like, and my friend was like, man, that's so, f-. like they're just, I guess, watching dudes play video games and then hearing these jokes, and then, you know, I don't know, man, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm saying when you <laughs> like monetize I mean, my personality. I it's like I think we're all trying yeah. to, every comedian is, I feel like trying to monetize their personality, but you need that thing to take off otherwise there's no money <laughs> yeah i'd be i don't know like i'd be interested in doing it if uh if i had a good setup to do it with uh and but i only want to play games that i actually like <laughs> and and i think that yeah. you kind of have to play whatever is the most popular game at the moment oh yeah I mean, a lot of games that i really enjoy uh don't do very well or take a long time before they do very well. And, uh, you know, like I, I spent all this morning playing the Avengers game and, uh, it is not popular <laughs> for a lot of reasons. <laughs> it has, it had a lot of kinks that, uh, they've <clears throat> literally been ironing out for the past two years. And, so it's only diehard sort of people like me, I think, are still playing it. And now they're at the point where they're begging people, kind of. They're like, "We're having a sale on everything in the game, and you know, <laughs> yeah. you get double. Ex- right now, it's I think you get quadruple experience points. Uh, do you know what experience points are? Um, I don't, but I can imagine. Let me guess: experience points. The longer you play the game, you've logged certain many hours, and the more hours, then you get experience points. Right, and they kind of upgrade your character. Like, you may start out with like a minor resistance to damage, mm. and maybe your character heals a little bit quicker. But let's say that's level one. Level one hundred would be like your fireproof and bulletproof. Oh wow! Like, so as you level up, it's important to get experience points to do that. You know. And so right now they're like, you can level up four times as, you know, uh, <laughs> as fast as ever, you know. And so they're really trying to get people back to that game. <clears throat> they, it, it's funny when you see that, like, a game developer knows they screwed up. And they'll start offering, like, all sorts of goodies to get people to start playing the game again, <laughs> you know. You know what I just realized? This is, I'm, I'm thinking outside the box. Well, this is probably pretty easy to think of, but, and I think this could happen to you one day, maybe. I don't know how or when or where, but pairing you up with like a, a hot girl or maybe two girls and, and having you guys I've, play video games. I've been games. trying to do that for years. Just uh, <laughs> pair up with a hot girl. Or and, two uh, girls. <laughs> so far, it, <laughs> I, I will say mixed results at best. That's yeah. <laughs> Because seriously, though, like we get a girl or two girls, and then, you know, and then I would love to pair up with two girls. That way, visually, it's like people are like, "Oh, look at these hot girls," and then your personality kicks in, and plus you know how to play the video game, and then, you know, I agree. I think visually, me and two girls would be great. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, 
like here's what won't well, you're work talking, you're talking about for like video games and stuff yeah yeah or yeah well, to, I'm sure that too you you gotta monetize your personality <laughs> you know uh, yeah i don't you, you'd like uh, yeah. maybe it'll turn into something else i don't know but you know i'll tell you what didn't work i did a um the laugh if we night. start out with like uh, maybe dinner and, you know, dinner with two attractive <laughs> girls. Yeah. And, uh, hey, you guys want to play video games on camera? <laughs> like, maybe some wine and then, yeah, ease them into. Yeah. To, oddly enough, this seems harder to talk girls into than pornography. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, yeah. With the two of you, I want you to keep a real open mind here. They're like, okay, uh, okay. And they're thinking, this, this guy's is, a creep. He's a creep. Very, this is very modern, what I'm about to suggest. Uh, would the two of you be open to playing video games with me? That sounds so much creepier. <laughs> I know. And they're like, the um, you, like, are you going to be it? staring at our feet or something? Is there something creepy? You're like, no, no, absolutely no, no. not. We're just, we're just going to play Dungeons and Dragons together. Like, uh, <laughs> there's a game called Gauntlet. Uh, I don't know if you ever played it, but no, you get four choices. What we ought to do sometime just for fun, whether we monetize it or not, but you, me, and uh, Aus, the base boss, maybe, uh, should play Gauntlet because it's a four-player game total. And you ha you choose between... Tell me which of these you would choose. Okay. Would you want to be an elf that has a bow and arrow, a lady that's kind of like uh, Natalie Portman Thor. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big barbarian He-Man type dude or Conan type dude or a traditional sort of wizard like Gandalf kind of wizard. If you had to pick from those four, hmm. what, I, what do you think you'd be? I think I would pick the elk with the bow and arrow. I think that's a solid choice for you, actually. You'd make a great elk. Yeah, and that... uh, the in the game, you basically go on an adventure in all these different mazes and you fight aliens and ogres and not aliens like, uh, yeah. Uh, ogres and demons and evil wizards and stuff like that. And you're supposed to work as a team and help each other out and get through the maze together, but you can steal each other's turkeys. And like, <laughs> if one of you finds gold, someone else can steal it. And the elf is actually really fast, so he's really good at stealing other people's stuff. Oh, cool! But you can, you can very easily self-destruct your team by uh, betraying each other too much, and you know, is the next thing you know, you're getting overwhelmed by uh, orcs and stuff. You know, <laughs> but yeah. it's a fun game. It's a lot of fun. I remember um, a few years back, the uh, the Laugh Factory is like, let's jump on this trend of. And, and this guy spearheaded it, and he's like, okay, we're going to have comedians playing video games, and we're going to, it's going to build. And uh, I got to be honest, man, like, it, I don't know if, because I'm not that into video games, I'm just the wrong guy for it, but it was almost like torture because we had to be there for, which sounds crazy. If I were to tell my 12 year old self, like, dude, someone wants you to play video games inside of a comedy club for two hours, I'd be like, are you kidding me? But yeah, that's what it was like. It was, we'd have to be there at two o'clock. And by three, you're like, okay, I'll see. And they're like, hey, can you stick around for one more hour? And you're like, okay. <laughs> and now you're thinking about traffic. And it, and then it got to the point where, you know, the comedians were. Did it feel uh, funny? <clears throat> like when, when you were doing it? No. I didn't. Did I feel like a funny comedian? No, I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> did no. I feel like a funny comedian? I felt like all the young comedians were all working and doing tours. And all and only guys that they could get were dudes over 40 <laughs> who weren't really yeah. into the video game thing. <laughs> like, at least those I games. I would be more interested in having them play games from their youth. You know? Exactly. Like, like I bet you would have a lot to say about if you revisited Pac-Man or Donkey Kong or one of those kind of games. Right. Space Invaders, uh, any of those Atari 2600 games or something. Because, like, even me, I'm I'm pretty strongly tethered to my childhood, obviously. But even so, when I go back and I play Frogger, I'm like, this, you forget, like, when you were a kid, yeah. this made sense. Right. But as an adult, you're like, why does this frog need to get across the street this badly 
there's no reason. He's died four times. <laughs> he's died and been reincarnated four times. And this fifth time, he thinks he's going to make it across traffic. And they're, like Donkey Kong makes absolutely no sense. Right. None. That, <laughs> that a gorilla would like kidnap a lady, take her to the top of a of a construction <laughs> site. It's not even a full building like King Kong. He's he he's just taking a construction site over and he has her at a cage up on top and he's throwing barrels down at from what I can gather is just a plumber that happened by the scene. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's not it's not a cop, it's not an army guy. It's just a dude. Some poor dude that's in the wrong situation at the wrong. He's kind of like John McClane and Die Hard, <laughs> you know. And yeah. like he he wasn't supposed to be there. He's off duty. <laughs> and the the only thing they give him, they don't give him a gun. All he gets is that mallet, and it only lasts for like thirty seconds. Did you ever get into Space Invaders and the, those Atari Twenty Six Hundred games? I yeah, I liked Space Invaders for. For what it was, it was, you know, uh, a very simple sort of shooting gallery. And only the shooting gallery would kind of shoot back every now and again. Yeah, and, it was kind of, and it was kind of like, what, Galaxy? Was that the other one it was sort of like? Uh, Galaga, I think. Galaga, it that's it, Galaga. Yeah, Galaga was like a, a pretty big leap forward because you had a ship and you could move it. You couldn't move it much, but you could move it side to side. And uh, do you remember the trick on how to get double ships? No. How? It was kind of like the closest video games had to like chess moves at that time. You had to let your ship, you had to have like a, two lives at least to do this. You would let your ship get captured by, there was a certain alien that would shoot like a, a weird ray down. Hmm. And you would let him capture your ship. Then you had to shoot and kill that alien. And then your ship would come back down and you would have two ships and you would get to double. Gun oh, so you had to sacrifice. Every, yeah. For at least a little while, but you could also fuck it up and shoot your own ship and <laughs> like kill yeah. your, your guy. And then you've really lost a lot. There's a, uh, a game that like each of those games is like that was a leap forward from space invaders. But my favorite of those kind of games was modeled more after asteroids. Do you remember that? Oh, I loved asteroids. Asteroids was good too. Okay. Tell me if you remember this game. Sinistar. Hmm. Does that sound familiar to you? No. How, how do you spell it? S I N I S. T A R. Like I'm Sinister, looking... but with a star. Oh, wow. I am Sinistar. Yeah. That game had everything at that time. It was asteroids only. Oh, that's cool. There was a big, evil looking planet. Oh, I see it. That would, would start to assemble. And once it was fully assembled, you were just screwed. Because it would come and just eat your ship, and it would talk shit to you while you were playing. It would be like, oh, "That's cool. I'm coming. I <laughs> hunger. <laughs> you know, run, coward, and you know stuff like that." Oh yeah, he has like red, red mouth and red lip. Uh... Yeah, and you could kind of like hyperspace. Oh, is that him right there? Listen, he's talking. Yeah, that was him. Here, listen. Beware, I live. Run, run, run. Beware, coward. Run, coward. I hunger. Dude, that's, yeah. oh, that would be fun. That's so. That would be so fun to play. It, it was when you started hearing that and you knew that he was like fully assembled and coming to kill you. <laughs> it was terrifying as a kid to, to play. And he would like, when your ship got caught in his like tractor beam. Hmm. Your ship would start spinning out of control oh, wow. and then you would watch him chew your ship up it was like the saddest you're like dang it he, he got so me <laughs> and like, run and coward you have like 
hyperspace where you can like if you're lucky you can thrust out of there but a lot of times you would hyperspace and run like right into an asteroid trying to escape from him (laughs) because you you would start to panic you know and like you can beat him but you have to like mine asteroids for uh, these certain gems that have that you can turn into missiles to uh, knock parts of him off but you have to knock like 50 parts off of him to do it. I, I was lucky enough to play the game on ultra super easy, like the most Mm. basic easy version of the game that you can play. And he still kicked my ass. I still had to play it like four times before I could beat it. You know? (laughs) Yeah. Sinistar. uh, You've never played it. Sinistar. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to, I don't know if it's still, and I wonder, are there things, are there, um, are there people playing classic video games on Twitch and that kind of thing? There, there, there must be. I mean, you and I are interested in it. Uh, I know there are. I know, you know, Jerry Rocha. Yeah. He does a thing at home called Retro Rocha where he plays old console games. And uh, uh, some <laughs> he, he, he's kind of fun because he really gets into it. Oh, and, cool. Like, he'll just replay old games that he played when he was a kid. Like, uh, he played one called uh, Blackthorn, where you're just like a, an adventurer guy. And he did the exact same move that I did when I played it <laughs> when it first came out. And it was such a, like, it's such a sad move. But there's, like, a guy chained up in a dungeon. <laughs> and you're coming through the dungeon with a shotgun. And you think, oh, I'm going to shoot and shoot his chains. Well, yeah. that's not what happens. Uh, you just shoot him, and he just sadly dies there in chains. Oh, and you're shit. like, that wasn't what I was trying to do at all. <laughs> I'm trying to be a hero. <laughs> it's so yeah. sad. And it's like, yeah. it's one of the only games I've ever played where, where I actually felt bad for the little video game character who doesn't <laughs> exist, really, who's not, you know, he's fine. Yeah. But, it, but like, it just looks so pathetic <laughs> that, you know. And then later you find out you're like, oh you have to, you know, aim <laughs> at a certain right, right. To, to not kill this guy. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, by the way, I want to tell you I uh, and by, oh I'll tell the listeners you um, okay so Darren Carter, Mike Black, John DeResta, and Gen X Talks they're very popular. We are yes we are I I at least I am I am trying to hitch my my train to their wagon or how do you say it hitch my uh, hit your wagon to their star, I think, or something. Long story short, we will be performing all all of us together. These guys are really popular. If you've seen them on TikTok, YouTube, everywhere, they 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 have learned to monetize their personalities. And so, Flappers in Burbank, October eighth. Mark it down. Buy a ticket. Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. And guess what? It's at four thirty in the afternoon. Four thirty. We will be at Flappers. Yes. I, I will be just waking up right around then. That's right. Uh, you're you're going to like, that's kind of cool though. That way we could, you know, we could meet, you know, hang out the, the, the audience later. Like after the show, it's still early enough. We can like grab a, you know, an appetizer or something, hang out with them and stuff. It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like those shows that are like midnight or 10 o'clock. It's like four thirty in the freaking afternoon. So that'll be cool. Would you ever do like what Andy Kaufman did where you have milk and cookies with the audience afterwards? I would do that. I think I would do that. You know what? It's funny. My my buddy just worked with a comic, like a comic star, one of these guys that like sells out everywhere. And he goes, I'm learning a lot. He goes, you know how, he goes, uh, you know how he's kind of a, that, that this, this comic star, um, I could tell you off the air. I don't want to say this on the air, but he goes, you know how he's kind of an a-hole? He goes, but it works for him because after his set, he goes into the green room and he waits till everybody leaves, and then he goes. And when people are yelling out his name as he's walking, they're like, he'll just he'll he'll go, hey, he'll wave at everybody and kind of smile at him. But under his breath, he tells the opening acts like, keep walking, guys, keep walking, don't stop, keep walking. And then he yeah he told one of the other openers, hey, you're getting better. You used to just run over like a puppy to everybody, you know, after the show. And and it and it kind of reminded me that. That I'm more like the other style. Like I, I don't mind doing the meet and greet with everybody, hanging with them, taking every last photo. But that fits my personality. But at the same time, like 
what that guy that guy's really popular so maybe he wouldn't want to be stuck out there for you know a lot of hours and, my, and then my buddy told me and this is kind of interesting mike he goes he goes you know i'm kind of learning because he goes you know how like the audience wants to meet you and they're all excited to meet you and then he goes then you just become like a regular person after about five minutes <laughs> He goes, yeah. you get, you just, they're like, oh, he's just like us. He's kind of boring. Like he's not really, you know, cause that thing that you're on stage, it's all like boiled down to like, it's almost like those Twitch guys we were talking about. Like it's all the best of da, 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 da. That's what on stage yeah. he goes. And then off stage um, after about five minutes, they're sort of like, oh, he's just a regular boring guy like us, like, or whatever. Yeah. You know? I could I do his job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know that any boring idiot could do this uh, i i can do it too uh i think it's a lot of it is uh, your personality uh sort of stuff yeah it, it's like we talked before about good guy wrestlers and bad guy wrestlers right there are benefits to both you know like going out and taking pictures with everyone is really nice but when the guys who don't typically do that finally do the audience thinks it's more special you know yeah because this guy would definitely be known more as a bad guy wrestler that people love but he's more of the exactly 100 yeah. percent the bad guy wrestler one time i but asked they also yeah. they get they attract an audience of not yeah not 100 percent, but assholes like assholes a lot yeah I, w I remember one time i asked him i go i go how's it going <laughs> or something like that and he goes, oh, and he's like smoking. And he goes, if I told you, you'd only think I was bragging. Because people tend to do that. Whenever I tell them how, how I'm doing, they think I'm bragging. So I've learned to keep things to myself. <laughs> yeah. And then, I, I, and then another time I asked him something similar to that, just like a common, you know, how you doing, da, da, da. And he told me he had sold a, an article of clothing, we'll say. I'm not going to even say what it is. On his website. And and he was charging seven hundred dollars, and he sold one that day. That's I, great. I was like, wow, that's. But I but I didn't look at it like with negative or anything. I actually was like, damn, that's the possibility. Like if if things go the right way, you know, people will yeah. want to, you know, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> like I said, it's, it's <laughs> ass, assholes like assholes, right? suckers like assholes too <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> i know it's uh you know there's a guy out there willing to spend 700 dollars on a shirt i know uh, it's n it, that guy is not my demographic but he's out there right you know? limited edition duh, 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 the mike black raincoat yeah. or whatever it is you know <laughs> like the yeah they uh so would i have milk and cookies yes i would have something like that i don't know if it'd necessarily be milk and cookies but yeah that'd be that'd mm -hmm. definitely be something it's, i would do Oh, yeah. It's only milk and cookies. That's the only option. That's the only yeah. option. Okay, I would do macadamia yeah. nuts because I love macadamia nut cookies. And uh, you know, believe it or not, I actually had oatmeal cookies uh, in, the, in the last few years, and I've kind of they've kind of grown on me. Like as a kid, I hated it because it wasn't chocolate chip. Oh it, yeah, yeah. As a kid, you feel like you got screwed over. Like oatmeal but, uh, with raisins. Oatmeal's not bad. I don't like raisins in it. A lot of people. That's <laughs> that's where they. Yeah. Uh, divide it's that i think we almost had a second civil war uh over that but um <laughs> did you did you see the the office where they had uh wow what's the guy's name that made makes cookies uh i don't know i don't know but like someone was like uh, uh i i have a suggestion for you and he goes <laughs> is it raisins in the oatmeal cookies? And they were like, I'm sorry, I wasted your time. <laughs> Cause clearly that's everyone suggests that to him. <laughs> is this kid? Okay. I looked it up. Kevin Malone is his name. The bald guy. That's, that's the guy on the office, but is it, but no, there's, oh. they had like an actual business guy come in, but I forget who it is. Oh, I so want to say that. Pepperidge Farm guy or something, oh, something but, like that. Hey, you know what I yeah. did? I was going to tell you. I was in, so I performed in Bakersfield, and I got there early. First of all, it was one of those days where it was like, uh, oh, like 113 degrees. It was a few weeks ago, right. and it was stressful because you would think like 
LA to Bakersfield, usually it's a pretty easy ride. You know, there's no traffic. It's, you know, hundred miles north. Well, I don't know that I've ever been to Bakersfield. Oh, dude, you would love Bakersfield. I don't think I would. I'm, I'm friends with Craig Coleman, and oh, yeah. he's told, told me a lot about it, and I don't think I would enjoy myself very much. <clears throat> yeah, there's definitely the Bakersfield that he talks about, but um, yeah, there's there's definitely that. But I got to tell you, they're great audiences, and it's definitely blue collar. Not everybody is what because he talked about the whole crystal meth scene, and it's that that's not really who's, that's not who's coming to the show. You're right, though. There are there is that faction of Bakersfield, but yeah. where I went, it wasn't like that. It was. Uh, um, first of all, I'd never even been to that part of Bakersfield. I didn't even know it existed. It was about five miles west of the freeway because I usually just get off the exits and that kind of thing, get right back on. And this part had like gorgeous neighborhoods with green grass and like the suburbs and and uh, you know each neighborhood had its own like name, you know, like these fancy names or whatever. But anyways, so I went to this. I went to the hotel. First of all, on the way there, um, there was a there was a fire on the grapevine. Um, okay. Yeah, and they closed. They shut down the five both ways on Wednesday of that week. Is that what they call the freeway out there? The grapevine. They call it the grapevine. Yep. Yep. The grapevine. Do, do the people there know that they call it that? I think they do. Yeah, I think it's actually called grapevine. You could Google it, and you know, whenever I look at traffic conditions, I look up like the grapevine. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna that. do. You don't want to take. You're not, you're not interested in doing any gig. I'm that gonna involves, take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think you would make up that it's called the grapevine. See, when your career really takes off, that's when you know when you when the when the instructions drive on the grapevine to get there. When my career really takes off, I'll have my helicopter avoid. Uh, like, I don't want to see the grapevine when yeah. we're flying over it. Yeah. Yeah. My private chopper. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. So I'm taking my me, pri- me, me and my two attractive a video game co-host right. will <laughs> avoid the grapevine at all costs. Yeah. At that point, you're probably just going to Santa Barbara. You would just skip Bakersfield. All right. Like, so I took my private Honda to my <laughs> game, to the gig. And uh, so on Wednesday, they shut the freeway down both ways. Bam, bam. What the heck? And then I don't, I don't want to go like six hours out of the way. So on Thursday, I'm like, all right, at least it's open to one lane. And then that night they opened it to two lanes. So yeah, so it was open to two lanes when I took it on Friday and there was still a one hour delay and a hundred plus degree temperatures, like 112 that day, 113 at some points. I, I finally get off the grapevine. I go to my hotel, really nice hotel, one of these like Hilton five-star hotels. And the room was amazing. It was at 65 degrees, Mike. You walk in, boom, 6'5", right there on the wall. It felt great. That sounds wonderful. I'm sure to everyone listening, right? Oh, my gosh. It felt wonderful, especially after being in like 112, 110. It got a little cooler as I got into Bakersfield. Like it cooled down to like 109. But it was like, even, you know, your air conditioning doesn't really work in your car when you're like going up a hill, Mm -hmm. like, bumper to bumper oh, gridlock yeah. traffic it's just like oh gosh so when i landed you know i got there and so before the show i had dinner at this place this thai restaurant it was across the street i'm like oh great i'll go there it was like called the purple elephant or the blue elephant or something like that <laughs> the blue bald elephant the blue bald elephant the elephant with blue balls <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he never forgets he never <laughs> forgets exactly <laughs> so this elephant so i go there and, uh, you know, the food was really good. It was good. You know, like you know, typically if you go to a Thai restaurant, it's almost all the same. I don't care where you're at. Like I've been in, at least in the United States, like Santa Monica, Burbank, Missouri, Texas, wherever I get Thai food, it's pretty much the same. It's delicious, right? See, now this is what that guy was talking about. You sound like you're bragging to everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone's listening. All these wonderful places. He's, he's just having Thai food yeah. in, in every city. He's just uh, <laughs> yeah. eating noodles, uh, touring the cities, and sucking on titties everywhere he goes. Oh, that's right. I don't care having if you're in Bakersfield or time of his life. Montrose. I don't care if you're in Montebello. It's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you've got a Thai restaurant and a five star hotel, you can get Darren Carter to come to your That's town. right. 65 degrees waiting for me. So then I get there. <laughs> and. So at the end, it was funny. The lady, the uh, the server, the waitress, she was really, she had a big old smile on her face. And she wasn't the one who initially took my order. But she comes over and she's like, 
would you like to try our dessert? And my initial response is, uh, no, no, thank you, because I'm, you know, I'm trying to get down to my fighting weight. I'm trying to, you know, knock off a few more pounds. And uh, what is your fighting weight? Well, I want. I, I, <laughs> exactly. That really bummed you out. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I was 200 not that long ago, and I was really excited that by September 1st, my goal was to reach 195. And I got on the scale September 1st, and I was 194.5. And I'm like, yes! Hell yeah. Yeah, so my, and I and I wanted to reach 190 by September 15th, but I know that's not going to happen. My goal now is I want to, the next time I get on the scale, I want to continue to be 195. And then I do want to get down, maybe by October 1st, to 190. And then, because I'm shooting a special October 22nd, and I want, I would love to be, Definitely under 195. I'd be very happy if I was in the 190s, and I would be really excited if I was in the 180s, even if it's 189.5. So, so wait, what? What? What is the realistic goal for October 1st? Uh, the realistic goal for October 1st, to be 100% honest, 195, which is stupid well, because that means I've been 195 for a month. But I haven't. I just want to know if just, I can. Yeah. If you could just maintain. If I could maintain, and, and yeah. Stay at 195. You'd That's be the realistic happy with goal. That yeah. On October 1st. Yeah. The realistic goal, 195. Well, I'll October tell you 1st. something, yeah. Darren. Yeah. Uh, October 1st is my birthday. No way. So my wish, my I'm putting all my birthday wish on, on you. <laughs> you have to weigh 195 pounds on my birthday. Damn. Okay. So that's my big wish, my big oh, wow. birthday wish. Wow. It's, it's all on your shoulders. Wow. There's a lot of pressure. Now oh, gosh. On. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, when when I blow out the candles, that's what I want, is that Darren Carter weighs 195 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> Man. Well, here's the thing. I, I got a shirt. I got two shirts recently tailored, and um, I got them drawn in. So, because so, before it was like kind of, it was extra large shirt, and it was it was boxy. It would kind of like, just kind of hang down. And I was like, man, I want this. So I tailored, I never had a shirt tailored before in my life. And, uh, even when I called, I was like, I felt like a creep a little bit. I was like, I'd like to uh, get this shirt tailored. And I uh, said, I've never done this before. How does it work? Do I, <laughs> do I wear it there? Do I try it on there? And the guy goes, or the girl, and she goes, Oh yes. you." I sound like a creep. She goes, Oh yes. You, you try it on in the, in the, um, the dry cleaning in the here in the establishment, and then I go. So I have to take my shirt off. Are other customers going to see me? And because I because I because I don't even know where there's a dressing room there. And she's like, she's like, no, 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 they won't. They um, there's a little. She's dealt with so many perverts that I'm sure she <laughs> exactly. Because I'm like, I just felt uncomfortable. Like I don't. Even, it's like, so weird. Like I'll take off my shirt down by the pool. But no, not... sir, and, and there's no need for you to touch your genitals while we measure you either. <laughs> and are there cameras there? And do, I, <laughs> I would like my underwear tailored. And uh, let's, let's say I've been a, a very bad boy, and I <laughs> I needed my shirt uh, <laughs> right. pressed, and then I needed to be spanked afterwards. <laughs> do you guys do anything along those lines? I'm just all the names, that sort of thing. I was just sort of <laughs> curious, and um, um, going back with his feet. Uh, theme from earlier with the video Say games. my uh, two female attractive uh, co-hosts yeah. that uh, play video games wanted to watch yeah. uh, all of this happen. How how much are we looking at financially? <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll be wearing sandals and we'll be filming it for our viral videos, but um, we're, we're trying <laughs> exactly. to monetize my personality. So, so yeah. <laughs> my I, creepy personality. <laughs> so I went there and uh, the tailor was busy trying to get his... Uh, macbook to work he's like ah, itunes it won't download i don't know what's going on with my itunes and i and i said are, are you on wi-fi and he's like and he's like yeah i'm on wi-fi but i don't know how and i was and i didn't even know how to help him so i was like I he just, doesn't sound like a he sounds like just a guy yeah, <laughs> just yeah. hanging out there <laughs> exactly <laughs> what's the wi-fi password at this place i know and i told him i said uh I said, you know, I'm going to have this tailor. And he goes, oh, yeah. And so there, behind this, there was some clothes hanging on a rack. I didn't realize that they were actually hanging on the dressing room door. So I opened yeah. it. I changed shirts. I come back out. And then he had folded the shirt over and safety pinned all the way down the sides, like where he was going to tailor it in. And then the, 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 the sleeves were kind of poking out. It was a short sleeve shirt. And then he kind of folded those over and safety pinned those in. And uh, then I went back in, took the shirt off, changed back to my regular T-shirt. 
And then I came back four days later, boom, I put this shirt on. It looks amazing, dude. I'm telling you, <laughs> everyone's like, you lost weight. No, I just got my shirt tailored and it's a black shirt. <laughs> And I think that's where that's I goofed. Up. That's where I goofed up because I was the I was the one ninety four point five that day, and then he even told me he's like, "Don't gain weight," because you know, like, yeah, because you know, it's like a wedding dress now. Yeah, <laughs> now you've got to fit into it. Yeah, and I and I actually wore it uh, on Saturday, and I and I think I have gained a few pounds because it, it it was still it was fitting a little bit more snug, but it still fits. But I'm like, I don't want that, dude. I'm trying to, you know. I'm gonna yeah, make, you want to? Yeah, you, yeah. For the special, you want for the special. I just want to feel good. I don't want to be looking at the special the whole time, going, ah, oh, my belly. Uh. But anyways, back to this, uh, back to this Thai restaurant situation. Um, I go. Uh, by the way, this shirt isn't even a. I got to figure out something because I don't know about you. And then we'll do the Thai story. I get. I fall in love with a certain article of clothing, and I just want that same thing again and again. If I don't care if it's jeans or shoes, and sometimes they discontinue it, man, and it's like, what the heck? Yeah. This shirt that uh, I like, they're, yeah. They're doing you a favor. I guess so. Cause, it's it's yeah. so the guys don't keep wearing, like, members-only jackets. <laughs> yeah. You know, 40 years straight. Because this, this shirt that I love, I'll tell you the audience right now, it's black. I just, found, I just fell in love with it recently in the last six months. It's black. It's a short sleeve shirt, button down. I found it at Kohl's, which I never even went to a Kohl's until about two years ago. And this shirt is by the brand called, and it's not even like Calvin Klein or Gucci. It's called Apartment 9. Right. <laughs> so I love this Apartment 9 shirt. And my I, my buddy just, I, I was on the phone with a friend. He just randomly happened to be at a Kohl's. I go, dude, you're at a Kohl's right now? I go, can you see if they have an extra large black shirt, Apartment 9? And he goes, are you kidding me? I go, no, I'm serious. It's called Apartment. I get all serious. I'm like, Apartment 9? And he goes, what kind of material is it? I go, dude, it's... This it's, shirt will cost you $11. Exactly. I, I will pay value I know, exactly. It's not even that much. I know. And and the, it's, it costs more to have it tailored, to be honest with you. Even the material sounds gross, but it works. So for some reason, it's spandex and polyester. It's a polyester spandex. <laughs> Apartment nine shirt. That, you, that shirt is highly flammable. You should not be wearing that. I know. I remember reading that. Like, don't wear it when you're in a in plane. The summer. But, yeah, I know. It's like I tried to just wear it on stage, you know. But you're right. I was like extra hot up there the other night. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not gonna breathe at all. A snug, tailored polyester. <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? Spandex. What are you, Mister Furley? You can't wear shit like that. I know. Oh, and the brand. Yeah. Oh, also, the extra thing about it is cool. It's called Untucked. Like, it's supposed to be like. That way you can untuck it. Yeah, kind of, right. Yeah, you know, it looks a little better. casual. Casual. But my wife goes, you know. Why don't they just call it dad bod? Dad bod. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the dad bod shirt. I know. I know. I, uh, I, know I my, we looked at only. I think there's plenty of other companies that make that same shirt. Like I should just, you know. <laughs> this is technically a shirt, not a moo moo. You know? <laughs> I know. I know, dude. I messed up yesterday with my diet. I woke up and had oatmeal, which I'm like, this sounds good. But then my wife was making this delicious thing of, um, I don't know what it's called. It's like vermicelli and bulgur. Then we had corn and some artichoke. It was so delicious that not only did I have a bowl of oatmeal, I had this this other bowl an hour later. And then it was so good, I had a second. So Wait, what's, what's the first thing called? Vermicelli? Ver, vermicelli, I believe. I think it's like an Italian type of... Oh, okay. Noodle, like a really th super thin noodle mixed with oh, okay. bulgur and corn and artichoke and oh, and then avocado was in there. So to make it like, it was just so good. But listen, anytime yeah. you have a, a bo one bowl of oatmeal, you're good. I, I, did, I shouldn't have eaten for another like eight hours. But I but so I had three giant eight bowls. Eight hours. Of, after I mean, a bowl of oatmeal. Don't you think? Like, let me think. Let's say you have a well, bowl of oatmeal. Clearly, I don't. Well, maybe not. <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen me ever, Darren. I, uh, eight hours between meals is really not my thing. Yeah. Well, uh, let, let's be realistic here. Let's say you have a bowl of oatmeal at 10 a.m. And the bowl of oatmeal okay. has peanut butter in it, has like blueberries, has a banana. You probably okay, aren't. Okay, yeah. If I'm throwing yeah. everything in the kitchen into the bowl of oatmeal, then yeah. You're probably That's, good for at least four hours. Yeah. Yeah. But like, but not eight. That's crazy. Yeah. It was... Uh, uh, you'll be happy to hear about this. I uh, found they started making my favorite cereal from childhood again. Uh oh! Oh, really? Called uh, Quisp. 
which well, I think we've talked about it. It's, no, uh, never. How do you spell it? Hat, I'm going to look it up. Uh, Q-U-I-S-P. Or it might just be Q-I-S-P. <laughs> I'm not a good speller, so I'm like, oh, yeah, here it is, Quisp. Yeah, see oh, the little wow. pink alien oh, yeah, the pink, on the box? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Now, look at the cereal itself. What do you see there? Okay, let's look it up. Okay, here we go. From Oh, man, I don't know what those are. Are those like Rice Krispie-looking things? Yeah. They're, uh, they're corn things, but they're all little bowls. Each one Whoa. is its own uh, corn bowl. Uh, so it's almost like they took a kick, cut it in half, and hollowed it out. You guys, this is so cool. I do remember that box. And by the way, I just went to the website, and it says, In 1965, Quisp landed on Earth with his crazy energy cereal, and the world's been a better place ever since, especially during breakfast. The saucer-shaped, crunch, saucer-shaped crunchy corn cereal has delighted kids and Mike Black everywhere. All right. Bring Quisp to your house and home planet today. The crispy flavor is out of this world. And it is. It's delicious. It's, you know, sugary corn bowls. But here's the kicker. When you pour milk on it, you each one is its own little bowl of milk. Wow. And it stays crispy. Mm. And uh, I ate half the box in, in one Oh sitting. wow! Uh, it, it wasn't as big as a normal cereal box, but yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, no, I've uh, I've done it. It was that. delicious, dude. One and, I got sick one day because I had like a whole cereal box of of uh. Well, I had other things that I ate, but then yeah, for some dumb reason, it was like twelve years ago. I mean, this might have been fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was about because it was before my son was born. For some dumb reason, I was like, oh, I, I was hungry at night after having a crazy, crazy lunch i had like weird foods that don't go together my friend took me to the kettle yeah. over by the beach and i got like oh, right. pancakes onion rings breakfast burrito nacho whatever it was just all this bad stuff and then for dinner i had an entire box of cinnamon toast crunch or what's it called cinnamon crust <laughs> toast crunch C yes cinnamon toast crunch and then for and then of course i got sick and then yeah dude it was not good i was sick in bed for like the next day i had to cancel a road gig how idiotic was that? i got food poison i don't know what it was oh, man. yeah that, never that's rough i've never touched that cereal again i'm like don't do it it's good cereal but yeah you gotta it's like a lot of things it's good in small doses you yeah can't yeah have yeah have one bowl all of, of it yeah every know. now and then have one bowl of like captain crunch or whatever life yeah. cereal or something don't go my buddy, you know, when you're a comic, you get, you keep odd hours, and so you get called by other comics, or, or it used to be more like that. Now it's texts, but uh, I remember uh, Ted Twyman. Do you remember him? Mm -hmm. uh, stand up comic. <laughs> he yeah. called me one night at like two in the morning, and he was like, "I don't feel good." And I was like, uh, oh. "What's what's wrong, Ted?" And he goes, "I ate all the Snickers." <laughs> and I was oh, like, no. "What do you mean you ate all the Snickers?" He's like, I ate the whole uh, bag. And I was like, bag? No. Were they fun size Snickers? And he was like, no. And I was like, <laughs> hey, did you eat 12 full size Snickers bars? And he was like, they were really good. <laughs> and I was mm. like, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, am I going to die? I was like, no, but you're going to drink a lot of water. And yeah. Go to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this brings me to the Thai restaurant, right? The lady's like, Big old smile on her face, really friendly. Just, you know, you know. She's like, "Would you like to try?" She's like, "Would you like to get our dessert?" And I was like, "Oh no, thank you, no thank you. I'm trying to, you know, because I'm thinking about this goal I have on my fighting weight, right?" And then yeah. she's like, and then she keeps, and here's here's a great sales technique. She just keeps talking. She's like, "We have five dollar manager special." And she's like, and for a hot day like today, you would love this dessert. And I'm thinking, oh, five dollars. And then she's yeah. like, oh yeah, it's. Cold. I go, well, well, what is it? I'm just like, well, I might as well ask. And she goes, yeah. She goes, it's it's crushed ice, coconut milk, berries. It's so good. Our manager, he created it, da, 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 or something like that. Something about her manager. He, ate it. he invented yeah. boba tea. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, exactly. And so I'm like. I'm thinking, oh man, it, it is hot. I look out the window and it was super hot, 113. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I drove through that, those fires and all that and the gridlock. And I'm like, man, that sounds great. Like I'm picturing like blueberries, raspberries, you know, mango, pineapple, like in, you know, 
in, in I don't know, just crushed ice, coconut milk. I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's do it. I'll, yeah. And I go, by the way, if I really like this, um, what's the name of it? Because I always memorize the names of things. Like when uh-huh. at that Thai restaurant, I learned how to pronounce. You know, whenever I go to anywhere in the world and I want Thai food, I can say, I can ask for, may I have pad ki meow? It's called pad ki meow, which uh-huh. is actually pretty easy to remember because it's like pad, and then like a key, like a car key, and then like a cat goes meow, so it's pad ki meow. And then the, the, I guess right. the English version, she said, if I forget, she goes, it's called Drunken Noodles. But I would just ask for <laughs> Pat, you know, Pat Key Meow. And yeah. I asked this lady. I, I would stick with Drunken Noodles. <laughs> yeah. I like saying Pat Key Meow wherever I'm at. Fort Worth, Texas, Tampa, Florida. I don't care where I'm at. I'll have the Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like the Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Pat Key Meow. Oh, yeah, that sounds like Manny Pacquiao. And so... <laughs> I asked the lady, I go, this sounds really good. I'm excited to try it. I said, now, I, I go, if I like it, what, what's it called? I go, what's it called? So I'll know what to ask for when I go to other restaurants. And she said, and then I'm telling you, she's a big old smile on her face. She goes, it's called friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, great. And I said, uh. And I go, and they have this everywhere? And oh, yeah, that's when she said, no, no, our, our manager, he, he created it. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Mike, I'm telling, I'm telling you, five minutes later or less, she comes back, hands me the bowl. I put my spoon in there, and it was terrible. It was <laughs> not what I expected. It was not. It was terrible. It was terrible. It was, first of all, you it was. A, a terrible friendship. Yeah, terrible friendship. It was, it was all, it was like, it looked like to be all milk. And like she said, an ice, which was cool. And then what I thought were berries were were gummy bears and hard candies. And like, I swear to you, dude, I'm like, is this an hour later? What is this? And it was like Jolly Ranchers and like, it was disgusting. It, it, He's like, I want to put all the fun of fruitcake into a drink. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was just weird because even as, as as the the waiter, there's another waiter. He had like he's like this 19 year old, 20 year old dude with he had sleeved up tattoos, and he yeah. was like, he's like, oh dude, you're gonna love it, man. I've had two already. I can't wait till my shift. I'm gonna have a third one. And I'm like, oh wow. And I realized like this is something like it's it's basically candy. And here's the weird part. On top of all that weird stuff, <laughs> it's uh there was something yellow in there, and the and the little yellow. And that's and that was the only thing that was real, and it was corn. So they had real corn, Ugh. mixed with candy and hard candies and gummy, like these chewy gum. I had two. I tried Blah. three. Yeah, three bites, thinking each one was a fruit, and no. And then she was she was nice enough. She came back, and you don't like it, and and, and she took it off the bill, so I didn't have to pay for it. But it was. <laughs> you don't like friendship. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I have a feeling whoever made. Friendship. The owner of the place was like a really, really old, sweet guy, and they're like, uh, "Just, we'll just try and get some people to buy it. Don't tell them if they like it or not." Like, <laughs> yeah. I know she went back in the kitchen, and he was like, "Did they like friendship?" And she, "Oh yeah, yeah, everyone loves it. Oh <laughs> yeah, they love it." He's like, "Here's a butterscotch Werther from my pocket, <laughs> from my carry." You know, I invented this, and then he just empties a, a pack of lifesavers in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe Coleman's right. Maybe they are all on meth out there. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know why, but this reminded me. Did you ever do comedy at a Moggy's? Oh yeah, Sunset? I did. I did. Now I don't know if you remember the staff there, but there was a, a real nice staff they usually had like one lady take care of the whole room while you were doing comedy there yeah but uh you know uh dr ken uh you know uh from the hangover movies yep yeah yeah he used to perform there (laughs) and one night he was performing and he was trying to be nice and he goes he sees that there's one waitress there and he's doing really well and he's the headliner. So he goes, uh, how about a hand for the Amagis for putting this show on and everyone claps. And how about a hand for our waitress who this one girl is taking care of this whole room and everyone applauds. And he goes, Oh, what's your name? And she goes, Pookie. 
<laughs> and he can't help he reacted just like you did. He, yeah. <laughs> you, your, your name is Pookie? And she goes, yes, don't make fun of me. Oh. <laughs> and and oh. everyone in the room looked at him like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you about to make fun of Pookie? Don't you dare make fun of Pookie. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, 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 no. He was like, uh, Pookie's great, isn't she, everybody? And everyone just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were so ready to pounce on him if he did anything. Like, Don't you he, dare make fun of Pookie, I know. But just the way she said it, just shut it down completely. <laughs> if there was any chance that he was going to make fun of her, it was, you felt like so, so much empathy for her in that moment. But she was just, don't make fun of me. Oh. <laughs> just the saddest. That's so sweet. Like, you can tell if you're a girl named Pookie, you've been made fun of a lot in your life. If, if you've lived more than like five years on Earth, because right. she'd already been through the ringer, I'm sure. She's like, I'm and good. Just like, I can't, I can't do this tonight, <laughs> you know. I can't have this whole room make fun of me. <laughs> That's cool. They, uh, I was going to tell you real quick, I went to Palm Springs on Friday. I got a gig in Palm Springs. And you know what I did? I, I actually, I've never done this before. I, I've been listening to a lot of Frank Sinatra, listened to his books. You know, I've seen a couple yeah. documentaries online, and I know he lived in Palm Springs. I actually Googled where his house was, and I put it in my ways. And even before I got to the hotel... I stopped by Frank Sinatra's house. It was pretty cool, dude. Oh, pretty wow. cool. Just to just to be like, you know what I mean? To see like the neighborhood and obviously it changed since then, but it was really a cool uh Did you knock on the door? No, I did not because it was there was a there was a gate. But and it's also I think oh. I because I, I, I looked, it's actually open for rentals and stuff. People can have like events there and stuff, but there's like pl a plaque. It's the Twin Palms house. And there's a there's a plaque and it describes you know what it, you know everything about it. Let me see. I actually took a picture of the plaque. Let me see if I can read it. I don't know if this will be interesting to you guys, but the plaque briefly says, um, "Sinatra Residence, completed in 1947, called the Palms for its landmark trees. The singer's modern view-oriented home uses strong horizontal and vertical forms. Historic site number 77." 2011 anyways it was really cool just to see his house and see those those palm trees and even the neighborhood yeah. i think it's called like movie star row or something like that like there's all these movie stars that lived in that neighborhood of palm springs it was pretty cool to see well what you ought to do the next time you're playing out there is rent that place can you imagine and have, a, have a big after party dude there's a lot of we got to think bigger you're right yeah you're right. We got to think big. Like, forget the, um, oh, I want to maintain my weight for a month. It's like, no, I need to, like, make my goal weight a little lighter. We need to build up our uh, monetizations of our personalities. Right. <laughs> we need to, yeah, there's a whole list of things we could do. But, um, Mike, you know what, man? Let's do it. Let's. Can you imagine if we actually got to the level where you're like, because people are doing it all the time. You know, my, my buddy um, worked with Kevin Hart in sacramento wow. and actually i'm sorry take that back my buddy was playing the punchline kevin hart was your, doing an arena your buddy saw kevin yeah, hart. yeah 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 <laughs> but they were hanging out and this is even before this is like 10 years ago and kevin hart was at the level where he had a crew with them doing all these big tours and what he would yeah. do and i thought this was kind of odd at the time but then i found out why he did it. i'm like that's actually pretty sweet he would buy like video game uh whatever the video i don't know ps2 or whatever people play whatever that video game console thing is they would right. bring that and video games on the road and and whatever they would buy it in that town play it and then apparently like leave it in the hotel so the maid would have you know a gift for her and her kids and i'm like that's just like one small thing that you can do that's like like pretty cool that is cool you know what yeah. i mean to be at that level where you're like you can help others and then like help yourself but then help others you know, so having yeah, a party that's... at the Frank Sinatra compound would be awesome, <laughs> and then it would be awesome for the like the fans as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. You know, have the music playing like the Frank Sinatra music and in, in that kind of playlist as you're there, the party starter. You yeah, ever, if you, you made it like a VIP, like more of a get together than a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more of a yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, they're going to destroy you, it. You still have to pay the deposit on that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like my, yeah, they're, they're like tagging you with their graffiti. They, Right. Yeah, it's like, oh, wait a second, guys. Uh, yeah. Build this to Darren Carter. <laughs> yeah, the party starter. But anyways, Lee, guys, listen, let's start it small. October 8th, <laughs> we'll be at Flappers in the yeah. Yoohoo room at 4.30 p.m. It doesn't get any small, smaller than that. Darren <laughs> will be at his goal weight. That's right. You will. I guarantee it. Oh, yeah, I, I guarantee it. I will be at that goal weight. I will be there. October 8th. 430 flappers burbank buy a ticket now because if it's going to sell out because it is a small room i think it only seats like 55 people so it will yeah, sell out and those guys have one any, of the lucky 55 the really popular guys the they're called gen x it's a father-son thing they're all over the internet they haven't even promoted it yet and i heard last night they've i mean it's not many but they've already sold 14 tickets so it's like you already know that no one none of us have promoted it to my knowledge, except for I think one little thing on the IG stories, and it's already sold 14 tickets, and we're basically I, a month out. I so. sent out four carrier pigeons. Oh, yeah. See, once once it gets and closer. And all of my pen pals know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they will know about it. They haven't got snail mail. It hasn't reached them yet. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. How would, how would you like to do a tour sponsored by – would you would you choose uh, sponsored by Gauntlet Video Games? Quisp cereal or friendship <laughs> Thai desserts? <laughs> well, definitely not friendship Thai desserts. <laughs> uh, if it could be sponsored by not just Gauntlet, but the people that made that video game, Konami, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, and but it's all their video games. If you got one of those big, uh, you know, those truck. Yeah. Oh, arcades, yeah. That'd be a fun thing. Man, that's good. All right, Mike, uh, I want to let you get on with your day, and I want to thank the listeners for hanging with us. We always love your messages, and uh, if you want to help yeah, us in any way, comment, like. Yeah. We live off of likes and comments and subscriptions and all that stuff, so all yeah. of that stuff helps. But what really helps a lot that people don't think about, if you like this, share it with other people. Like, get other people into it and get them excited about it. Too. Yeah, and here's how to share. People might not even know how to share. There's a, on, for example, on YouTube, there's a, you hit the share button and you copy the link and then you can paste it on your Facebook, your Twitter. If you're on IG stories, you can, there's a place now you can, you can paste a link in your IG stories and oh, just take, new. take a screenshot, just take a screenshot of the, of the episode or whatever. So that'll be your photo. And then for the link, you just paste it there. If you're listening on Spotify, it's very easy. You just hit the share button, share it everywhere. Apple podcast, you just share it. But anyways, thank you so much, you guys. And thank you, Mike. Or just shove your phone in one of your friend's faces. And say, <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Ask for people's device at work or whatever, and just make <laughs> yeah. them subscribe, subscribe. And Oh, you know what? Apparently Apple is the leader in all this podcast stuff. So, Go to Apple on someone's iPhone or even your iPhone and just give it a five stars and a review. And I'll be reading all the, the latest reviews. So so there yeah. you go. You'll get a shout out. Even You could even plug your own business or your own social media. I don't care. You could literally just be <laughs> like, I love this podcast. This is, you know, and you could say your name. I don't, I don't care. But See, you're the opposite of a bad guy wrestler. <laughs> like, exactly. Oh, uh, whatever you want to do, just come do it. You guys, come. Yeah, we, exactly. We'll... we'll Hang out with you. We'll eat Quisp cereal. <laughs> It'll be a good time. <laughs> let's let's actually. You know what? Speaking of reading reviews, let's see if we have any new ones. Okay, Pocket Party podcast. Okay, here we go. Pocket Party podcast. I'm on Apple. There it is. I'm clicking. I'm scrolling. I will read two reviews real quick. Here we go. I got uh, somebody writes. Love it. Always looking forward to new ones. I've been following Darren Carter, the party starter, since 2008. And he's been putting a smile on my face for all these years. He's a hardworking comedian, and his material always fresh and funny. I would totally recommend this to anyone. All right. <sighs> I was trying to get one that has Mike Black written in it. Uh, <laughs> I don't see one yet, but they always love you. They always love you. They're always on, on YouTube is usually where I see those comments about Mike Black. They're like, they love Mike Black. They sure do. And, they and sure I do. love them. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them. Yeah. Hey, maybe we could be like the good guy, bad guy. No, we're both good guys, I'd say. Like, you know what I mean? We're not the good guy, I'm bad a, guy. I'm a medium guy. I'm more like, I'm less like a good guy or bad guy wrestler. I'm more like the 
the manager that'll hit you with a chair when you're not yeah, looking. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I, but I think you're a good guy in the fact that like, if I said, Hey, let's do this. I think you would go along with it. Like if I'm like, Hey, can we do a little meet and greet with the fans? You're like, sure. But it's not going to be your initial if, idea. Yeah. If it's not going to interrupt uh, my sleep schedule. Right. I, I, would, I would do a meet and greet with yeah. fans. Yeah, you're right. That's good. You would like you. Let's say I stick around for a half hour. You would probably stick around for twenty minutes of the half hour. Yeah, and I would I would go. I'm I'm bored now, but I would say it loud enough where people could hear, and then I would storm <laughs> off. But then exactly. that that works for you because you're like, well, well, I'm gonna stay here and sign things for everybody, yeah. and, and everyone will go, yay, <laughs> yay. I know. All right, buddy. But what if this show gets so popular that people actually end up bringing like a apartment nine black extra large shirts to us? You never know. You may get a box tomorrow. There's no telling. I know, right? And then I'll be off to the tailor to make, to make them fit. <laughs> I'm such a goof. All right, buddy. Hey, Mike. It was great hanging with you, man. Let's talk soon. Always Thank good. you. Have you a got, great one. You got Bye-bye. it, buddy. Bye. How fun was that, man? Mike Black. Boom. You guys, thank you so much. And if you want to help monetarily, I'm on uh, PayPal. Go to DarrenCarter.com. I'm on the Cash App, dollar sign, Darren Carter Comic. I'm on Venmo. Dollar, what is Venmo? De- Venmo is, oh, at Darren Carter Comic. D-A-R-R-E-N, Darren Carter Comic. But as usual, we love doing the podcast, and I love making, you know, making your day hopefully a little bit better and you've made my day a little bit better just by listening and and uh man what a great day it is today all right i'm gonna finish this up have a little fruit and then get out there and get my hike so i can get that goal weight going because i uh i've been i've been sticking with my push-ups you know what's funny i was doing 50 push-ups 50 sit-ups and then my buddy frank cronin you guys know frank he's the irish guy that walked from san francisco to la and He's like, dude, I've been doing 100 push-ups because he thought I was doing 100. And I stepped it up, and I've been doing 100 push-ups. It's pretty easy, especially if you knock out the first 50 in the morning, you know, like 25 at a time or whatever. And then throughout the day, you just drop down and do a few more push-ups. Next thing you know, you're at 100, and your body does feel a lot better. I feel like my – I feel a lot better. But anyways, that's all. Uh, Do your push-ups, do your sit-ups, drink your water, and let's get down to those goal weights. All right, guys, lots of love. Have a great day. Don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody. Be careful. Bucket party. Yeah. When I'm down and feeling low with so much negativity, I listen to Darren got his pocket party. He got his friends as guests and they be really funny. It ain't over till he say, boy, don't hurt nobody. Yeah. They run, 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 run.